This business is like the Wild West. Gold, silver, rare coins, ancient weapons, lost treasures of history. You never know what's gonna walk through that door, but if the price is right, I always try and buy it. I'm Evan Kale, and this is Pawn Man. I have one of these that you said you're not interested. I don't know if you're interested in one of those workbook clips again. Oh, it's uh, yeah, one of these. Yeah, you uh, you did a few tips. I don't know if you're interested. If you're not, that's fine. I completely understand. Well, how much you want? What do you uh, throw me an offer? Mm, Twenty bucks. Yeah, deal. Go. And then I do have a couple other things in my car. But sure, I'm not you sure. can go through this car too. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if you want them because they're a little bit bigger, but they're um factory sealed mash revival sets like the plastic glue together sets for MASH 4077, that old TV show. Oh yeah, uh, let's get through this first yeah. and, then, and then I'll take a look at those. I got a lot of cool coins for you. So you got right? some letters from World War II. Yeah, I, see. I can't fucking read that. I know, that's just it. I was just like, oh, and I am a like little bummed because I remember when I bought these, one of them you can see an the indentation, there was a patch with one of them and all of a sudden they went off eBay and then all of a sudden yeah, they came back they on. Yeah, they do the stuff on eBay. Nope, I actually was able to, yeah, they took it off and he put it back on without the patch, so. Yeah, yeah it's do no you have a price in mind on these? Throw me an offer, I'm, I'm not picky, so. 50 bucks for the three? You got a deal. All right. And I got a lot of boomer stuff for you. All right, I know you bread like and butter. Shit. Oh yeah, first commemorative man. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know, I've I never seen one of them before and it's silver, I think. I'm not 100% yep, sure. 90% silver. All right, so we'll make a pile of the clad stuff and I'll just do a blanket offer. Right, yeah. And then yeah, the silver me. stuff, I'll make another pile. Yep, yep. Oh, that's fine. Boom shit with a capital Boomer. B. Oh, here, here's here's a good one. The Royal, got Yeah. It. And here, I got some more sitting here for you. Fucking hate the Royals. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. You I got know. some currency? Yes, uh, sure. here's some military currency. Oh, love it. I actually am gonna be doing military currency in a couple episodes oh, here. Oh, really? And then, I don't know if you're interested, these are checks, like yep, 1800s yep, checks. Yep, yep, I buy these too. Okay. Uh, the old man had a bunch of these. Oh, yeah. So, I got some, you know what, I'm just gonna get to the box. Here you go, why don't you just take a look. Okay. So, there's a lot of, I know there's a couple nice ones in there, but that's the ones. Yep. There's some really, there's a 1938 one, and I think that's the one right there. That's an excellent shape. All right, so a pair of checks, how's 15 bucks? Sure, sounds great. Okay. How's 40 bucks for the pile? Sure, sounds good. I actually got a couple of comic books too, if you're interested in. Let's take a look. There's nothing fancy. I don't, uh... There's some G.I. Joe ones, actually. I just, I've never seen G.I. Joe ones, so I picked them up at a garage sale. What'd you pay on them? Uh, I paid, I think, two bucks a piece. Give me four bucks again, uh, they're yours. I'm not happy. Sounds like a deal to me. Okay, and then this is what they are. And these are the helicopters. Oh, ones. okay, and they're sealed. Yep, Where's factory that? sealed. I got a bunch of them, actually. Okay, yeah, actually, I'd, I'd fuck with this. Yeah. I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't sure if you were talking about some big thing. No, that's, that, that's why uh, I, I do apologize messaging you a lot, too, asking uh, you stuff. No, I, I didn't want to bring stuff to waste your time, so. Uh, Cool. How many you got? I got two, three of the helicopters total. Yeah. And I got four of these, the swamp scenes. All so factory. seven boxes total? Yes. Did you have a price in mind for all of them? A little bit, throw me an offer. You got seven boxes, hundred bucks? Perfect. Sounds okay. Sounds okay, great. so we're at four hundred and seventy dollars for everything. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like oh and on one of your books too. Would and one able, of my books. Yeah, you'll do that? Uh, yep, okay, um, I'll just give it to you for free. Oh, you sure? Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. I actually got one right here. And I've already got some of these MASH toys that I bought sold. I paid $14.58 a box. I'm getting 60 bucks a box on eBay. A little bit more after eBay fees 60. I gotta spend priority mail shipping, so. Yeah, I'm making like 40 bucks a box here. That's a really, really good deal. So I got a ring here, bought it yesterday. There's this lady that came in, did a bunch of costume jewelry and gold jewelry she was liquidating. I had Julia do the deal because I was busy. But this ring was among the stuff that this lady sold to us. Now this ring here, these diamonds are about a 10th of a carat each. There's five of them. As we know, diamonds are not like water. You can't just pour them all together and have a half of a carat. It doesn't work like that. This is the kind of thing, I'm not gonna pay any extra on these diamonds, but the fact that I bought this ring and now I own these diamonds, it'd be a shame to waste them. It's a pretty Recently, I have been scrapping diamond rings, or like I've just been going through and ripping out the diamonds and putting them in a bag. And I also have been making TikToks about it. And I've noticed when I smash things on TikTok or whenever I break things or rip things apart, the videos do really well. So every time I see one of these, I mean, not only am I now gonna be getting extra money for the diamonds that I wouldn't have been getting before, I was just kinda, you know, when I scrap these rings and the diamonds go with the ring, I just throw them away. Now I'm actively taking out all the diamonds to get some extra money. I got $200 into this ring, it melts at about 300, but because I'm gonna scrap these diamonds 
turns out I might get an extra hundred dollars on top that I was just gonna waste. And yeah, it, it seems like a folly now this late in in my career, like this late in opening up my shop that I've sold all these diamond rings and I've just sold the diamonds with them and not kept them when all they're buying is the gold, the people I'm selling them to. So let's scrap this ring. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is put this on the ring sizer, just kind of very carefully. I'm gonna take a knife, can't use my needle nose, and just try and pry them out without damaging my desk too much. I'm gonna hit it with a hammer. I'll make it more brittle. It's really, really, really cold out today, so I'm gonna do this down here. I have a solid floor. So I'm gonna just hit this with a hammer to get these loose. Huh. They all fell out. And boom, just like that. I mean, look, see how tiny these little diamonds are? But now I have some extra money where I otherwise would have just been wasting it. Awesome, I got some new silver coming in stock. Thank you, Vault Coin Shop. These prices were amazing. I'm really happy to get this in for my store. So I got Disney's Frozen, Jurassic Park, Marvel, Captain America, Marvel, Spider-Man. Vault Coin Shop, I'll have to add the vault to, I don't think they're on my leaderboard yet. Nope. All right, Vault, you are joining. Here's a better look at everything. So this is Spider-Man. This is Captain America. This is Frozen, which admittedly I've never seen because I don't do kids movies. And this is Mickey Mouse. And then Jurassic Park. So I paid $125 for Jurassic Park and I paid $90 each for all these. And I'm gonna ask $130 on all these and $160 on this one. And I will probably get it because that's, with these Star Wars ones, I mean, I acquire them for about 90 and I generally get 120, 130. So, and these look so good in my showcase too. This is the one thing that's like, you know, I have to sell them because I'm making money, but I do not like it when my showcase when I sell everything and then it's just bare and empty. Also, this to me is hilarious. Swiss excellence, made in India. Yeah, he'll, you'll, you'll be seeing a lot more of him in this show, just you watch, guarantee it, I bet money on it. Okay, let's see what we got today. So we got this, oh, look at that. There we go, that's more of my speed, that's what I like to see. Here you go. <laughs> So we got ourselves, okay, a little bit better. We're, we're, we're improving here. We have a Mickey Mouse watch. <laughs> a relevant item that I sell. Here's a battery, I'm gonna do that back to you. Uh, this is a piece of uh, in, studio in, watch. No, if it says made in China, it's not. Really? Yeah, the Chinese don't make silver. Oh, it's really? Yeah. I'm, I believe you, I'm sure. This is Pewter from Denmark. And then we have a Citizen Quartz watch. A Sonic watch and I'll be damned. Did you bring me some gold? Really? Well, let's, let's see if this is. So what we do is we're just going to take this granite block, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just... Oh, yeah. No way. I'll, I'll... For shits and giggles, I'm going to scratch really hard. I can tell just by how it's rubbing. It's not gold. Okay. The gold will rub off. Yeah, I can't even get an impression. So this is just costume. Mm. Uh, do the best you can, dude. I always do the best I can. I know you. You, you, you should be real nice. I at 15 bucks on this stuff. So that's where I'm going to be at with this. Because most, the, most of these watches are junk. Like, this doesn't work. This is worth, you know, like a dollar. Uh, I'll make 25. Yeah, I'm not doing 25 on this stuff. Um, I'm going to hold it 15. 15 is where I'm going to be at with this stuff today. Do, do 20. Do, do, do. Again, I'm holding at 15. 18? I, I, I'm not coming up means I'm not coming up. I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, he's meaner than I am. All right, and then we got another deal walking in right after. That's what I like to see. You got that one two combo. All right, let's we'll start with the best thing, which. The best? You need real money for. Oh, but. Yeah, this is good. Look at that. This is a full set of Eisenhowers, and these are all proofs. They're silver. Uh, they're 40% silver. How much did you want on the set? 200. Not all of those are silver, just FYI. Yeah, I'll do 200 on the set, that's fair. All right, I don't even know what this is. Let's we have the, oh God, boomer shit with yeah. big old B. Yeah. The Westward series yeah. of nickels. Just hell. I don't even know if there's just two nickels in there or what. Yeah, there's, there's don't, don't break the seal on the back. Sealed. 
It could be six six with the proof. I don't even know. So the, the face value on something like this is 10 cents. Obviously, people are going to pay more because it's collectible. Five dollars total. Five, you want five bucks for Five the... bucks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, aren't you fair. All right. I wish everybody was like you. Keep, keep going. Here's another complete Eisenhower set. It's the usual album instead of the, of the whole case. I set. So that would be 175. It's the same set as the other, minus these, okay. these two coins. All right, that's fine. 75. All right, face value on this, two bucks. Got it. John F. Kennedy stamping coins. $27. 27. Fancy packaged up, 10 quarters a book. Okay. Well, four bucks a piece. Oh, fun. How oh, fun. Yeah, I'll do four a piece on these. 20, 24. Some like touristy Philippines sets. Oh, four. Oh, five bucks for those two total. Philippine souvenir sets. Five bucks on these, you got it. I had too many things going on at once. I was live, I was trying to train my new guy. It was not new, but I was trying to do this YouTube thing too. So I forgot to film the conclusion of that deal. It was $650 for all that stuff. It's like a lot of crap, but it is a profitable venture. I mean, this is a good set that he sold me here. I'll probably be able to get 300 on this set. 300 more on this set of Ikes. My boomer shit is rapidly accumulating. I did a big, um, one of those things that I do where I just do a bunch of boomer shit starting bit a dollar. I already did that right there with that and I already have, after doing that deal, even more stuff than when I started today, so. It's all gravy. Just the thing that's difficult is you, we gotta turn this stuff quick. So like as soon as we get it, you know, that was the that was the thing. As we were starting to pack it up, it was like, nope, just put it on the counter. We're gonna list it right now. That's what we gotta keep doing. All right, let's take a look at what you got. I don't know exactly like if it's all like plated, but. Yep, this is, when it's got this like kind of dark hue or like a rainbow okay. coloration to it, it's plated. I still buy it, it's just not expensive. But let's take a look at what all you got. Maybe one of them. Yeah, ones. see it, uh, you see when a bubble is green like that? Okay. That's an impurity being eaten away. It's not okay. uh, gold or silver. I'm gonna go get the rest and I'll let cool. you. you I'm gonna start weighing the stuff. I'm gonna start on my scale right here. You got 60 bucks. Perfect. Okay. All right, number two. Uh, my father recently uh, passed away and he saved these for my, my kids, but they're grown now. All right. Here it is. This goes with it. It's just a uh, thing that goes with the. What the devil? Oh, it's a whole like toy set of like. And they're, they're, they've never been out of the boxes, and my he was just collecting them over the years. How much was your first offer for? I haven't got an offer. Today's the first, uh, besides the garage sale. Yeah. Um, we just put numbers on them because we looked them up and, you know, the people in the family said that's what they were worth. Sure. I don't know. Uh, my problem is number one, I, I don't know how quickly these are going to sell. Number two, I got to pay my employees to list it. Number three, I'm going to sell these on eBay and eBay is taking like 20%. Um, I'd be comfortable at 16 a box. Okay. Yeah, 26 and one makes 27. Yep. So 27 times 16 is $432. Uh, I'm actually happy with that. Cool. Yeah. All right, let me cash. I don't need your ID because this is just toys. Okay, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I paid 16 each on these, and the guy's retail prices, I mean, I don't know, about 310 but probably get about 50 bucks a box. And the reason why I was excited to do this is I bought some MASH toys about a month ago. I paid 14 a box. They were sealed in plastic, brand new. They were going for like 60, 70 on eBay and I've been getting 60 on them like all day long. So I wonder if I'll do as well on these. Um, Actually, this is one of the cheaper ones. I got mine up for 150 just to be cheaper, but like I actually might make like $2,000 off of this deal that I did. I cannot believe this. I sold this one for $225 and then I sold this one, which I gotta find in here. This one went for 60. Now I have all my money back, now I'm profiting and all this is pure profit. Pure, I mean, again, I'm gonna make like $2,000. This is, I fucking can't believe this. Which goes you to show because when the guy came in with that stuff yesterday, I kind of rolled my eyes and he had those price tags on them and I thought, oh, you're just doing what the con artist does, putting a price tag on something, thinking that I'm gonna say, oh, well, it has a price tag on it. That must be the price that it is. And in this case, actually, that is the price that it is. So I got an incredible deal. Can't believe this. Hooray! And you know, if a deal like this would walk in every day in three months, uh, 
a lot of money. So, if I, it's, not, it's not happening, but it will. Word's getting out about this place, damn it. It's like Dr. Strangelove. Mein Fuhrer! Mein Fuhrer! So this is strange. I think I've talked about this at some point in my show before, but this is a class ring here. Class rings, when they come in, they're usually 10 karat gold. Sometimes they're gold filled. Usually an inexpensive gemstone. In this case, it's got a big amethyst. They're very collectible. It is the damnedest thing. I get them and I usually melt them down, but I very well could put this on eBay for above melt and I bet I would sell it. People collect these class rings and I think it's so strange that like, would you want to buy someone's class ring? It's got somebody's name that isn't you who attended a school that you didn't attend in a year that you didn't attend. Why? People collect the strangest things. It's so strange to me. So in this case, I am gonna scrap this one. This is from nearby Hopkins Eisenhower High School. 1976, I would assume that would match up with the age of the person who sold this to me. But like, it's got his name in it and it's the damnedest thing to me that people like to collect these. So those of you guys that saw Between the Pawn a couple weeks ago, we got kicked off eBay for two weeks because we were selling pornography. We were selling Hustler and Playboy magazines from the 1970s, and apparently eBay has this ridiculous Puritan policy where it's filthy, it can't be on their site. They're of value at eBay. Nothing, nothing like this. So it's really annoying, but that cost me a ton of money being kicked off eBay. It's a big part of my revenue stream and I just don't want to fuck with that. So I have a bunch of these vintage Playboy and Hustler magazines that I've been sitting on and I can't sell them on eBay and I kind of don't know what to do. So I got myself an idea. All right guys, for this informative segment, we are talking all about Playboy Magazine, its rise, its fall, and its collectability. Playboy Magazine, or the Playboy Bunny, is one of the most recognizable symbols probably in the pop culture lexicon, certainly one of them. It's affiliated with vanity, sexiness, intrigue, mystique, and sex, mostly sex. Playboy Magazine was founded in 1953 by Hugh Hefner and Eldon Sellers. Hefner had been working as a copywriter and he had an idea for a controversial new magazine that featured nude women. He wanted to do something that published full nude women in color, something that wasn't done, something that was seen in the 1950s is very risque, very scandalous, very cutting edge. So Hefner did not have very much money. He originally wanted to call the magazine Stag Party. There was already something called Stag Party and they threatened to sue him. So he dropped that name and he came up with Playboy. The bunny, which was designed by Art Paul, was a concept of Hefner's. He thought it was cute and sexy. So like I said though, Hefner had no money. He raised $8,000 amongst 45 different investors, which adjusted for inflation today is about 80 grand. And he assembled the very first issue, which featured Marilyn Monroe on the cover on his kitchen table. And interestingly, Marilyn Monroe didn't consent to being on the cover of the first issue of Playboy. In fact, she didn't even get paid for it. Hefner, using an alias, purchased a bunch of photos of Marilyn Monroe because she was struggling. And he's like, oh, I see you have these lovely photos of yourself. How about I buy them for my personal collection. And by personal collection, I mean, I'm gonna put them in my magazine and make a lot of money off of it and fuck you, you don't get anything. Which by the way, just just that story about Marilyn Monroe should cue you everything you need to know about Playboy and yet, well, we'll see where the story is going here. So the first issue with Marilyn Monroe, there were 70,000 copies that were made. They all sold, all of them at 50 cents. But what did Hefner do? As soon as the magazine starts to move, he puts all the money that he's making back into the business, kind of like what I'm doing with my business here. The name Playboy was actually Eldon Seller's idea. It was named for the Playboy Automobile Company, which is a defunct auto company. See, with the Stag Party thing, as soon as Stag attempts to intervene with legal action, Sellers is like, well, what about Playboy? That's a fun, hip name, right? Yeah, cool, let's run with it. And there's a bit of a family connection too. Eldon Seller's mom had worked for the Playboy Automobile Company. So initially, the magazine is a massive success largely because they don't really have any competition. Nobody had done anything like this before. It was seen as very ballsy, very daring. Slowly public opinion would turn against them from daring to degrading, but that would take about 30 years. The 1970s, Playboy was at its high. It was selling more than 7 million copies per month. In fact, the November 1972 issue is the most sold issue of all time. Now, part of why Playboy was so successful, it wasn't just the fact that it's women taking off their clothes. It's the way that it was presented, you have the playmate. It made it very exclusive. The girl who was the playmate, the marketing behind it was designed to make you feel something personable with her. Like, you know, maybe she's the girl next door. Maybe she's the new secretary at the office. You get these, you know, it teases you a little bit, little bit. It's here she is. Here she is in her underwear. 
Here she is doing this risky pose in her underwear and it escalates to the centerfold. Well, here she is naked, here you go, have fun. So by doing this girl of the month, this flavor of the month and marketing it the way that they did, it, it was very engaging for readers. There was nothing else like this. In 1972, during the magazine's height, during the year that it sold the most copies, they had a gross profit of about $12 million. That's $80 million adjusted today. Now, interestingly, this continues through the 1970s, but it begins to decline in the 1980s, which some of you may not be, some of you may think that that sounds kind of silly. Here's why. VHS porn, at home porn, more risque, more extreme, more, well, it was doing a lot of things that Playboy couldn't do. It was taking advantage of the new VHS cassette tape market. And again, this will continue as uh, pornography becomes more widely distributed. Do you want to see a girl strip down and play with herself in a picture? Or do you want to see her get banged seven ways from Sunday in real time? Most people go with the lab, myself included. But Playboy, as it is ascending in the 70s, it really throws itself into this lifestyle, this brand that it has created. In the 1970s, you start seeing these Playboy clubs pop up, all, first all over America and then all over the world. The Chicago Club, the first year that the Playboy Club opened in Chicago, it had 50,000 members. And to work there, girls were given a strict set of rules. They were given a bunny manual and there was all this like super, it's exactly what you can imagine, just terrible degrading shit that they had to do to work there. But interestingly, by 1986, all the Playboy clubs, they had started out so strong, spread around the world, and then they just fizzled out. By 1986, the last one had closed. And really, this is where you kind of start to see the demise of Playboy, because not only do you have pornography giving it a run for its money, but you also have a political climate changing in America. You have women demanding to be empowered. You have women saying that this is wrong. Everybody just kind of starts to agree that like, you know, this isn't this sexy fun thing. This isn't daring, it's demeaning. Readership starts to drop. Playboy starts to have more competition. You have a uh, Hustler and Penthouse Magazine arising. Interestingly, Eldon Seller left Playboy right around when it was reaching its height or as it was beginning to wane. He stayed on Playboy for 15 years and then he went off to go pursue a career in law of all things. Maybe he thought he was gonna get sued. Now what really killed Playboy was its sloth onto the internet. The internet took off in the 90s, but Playboy was slow to the punch. And what would happen is if you would type in Playboy in the 90s, it would direct you to one of their competitors. It wouldn't direct you to them. And they lingered on this for too long, and by the time they acted, it was too late. They were losing readership. They were losing massive sales to pornography, to the rise of the internet. You know, you go from having to pay money to see a picture of a woman naked, to being able to just type it in and watch her get fucked for free. But part of what kept Playboy alive as long as it had was this marketing that Hefner had done. He had really branded himself with this bunny, made it so recognizable, sold this lifestyle, this Playboy lifestyle. And on top of that, the magazine that he created, he put a lot of effort into it in terms of the intrigue that he was creating. It wasn't just about, you know, you guys have heard the joke, I don't read it for the, the nudie pictures, I read it for the articles. Indeed, he had a great marketing campaign with the writing quality itself. It was top notch. He had incredible interviews, very well written pieces. He would have cartoons. These magazines were so much more than just women taking off their clothes. I mean, ultimately that was a selling point, but there was more in it than that versus you open up a hustler. There's, there's not uh, well written articles in it, shall we say. Some of these playboys that I've been getting, I do flip them open. I do find myself reading the articles sometimes. They are great articles. In fact, my episode on the Hunt Brothers, my primary source of information was a playboy article on the Hunt Brothers. It was like a five or six page fascinating article. It was so well written. It was such a good article. It was my, my primary source material. First time I've shared that here. Also part of Hefner's ingenious with his marketing, it wasn't, we're making these women take their clothes off for money so men can jerk off to them. No, 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 no. We're empowering women to take their clothes off for money so men can jerk off. There's a difference. And he ran with this for as long as he could and it worked. People saw Playboy as being this thing that was giving power back to women. You have the right to take off your clothes. Good for you. But gradually, this starts to crack. It's it's all a facade, and it, he's not able to keep it up forever. Another thing he's able to do is acquire the Playboy Mansion and turn that into this tour legendary tourist attraction that just feeds mystique. It's one of the famous places or was of Hollywood. You know, one of the places, a party at the Playboy Mansion, and you want to go there. We all know what happens in the grotto stays in the grotto. Have I ever been there? No. Have you ever been there? Probably not. But we know the rules of the grotto. We're familiar with it because of the intrigue that he sold in pop culture. So like I said, Playboy champions itself on women's rights, LGBT rights, cannabis reform, racial injustice. You know, it's really reaching here trying to say we're affiliated with all these fun, liberal, upbeat movements that matter. Really, it's like, no, we just make women take off their clothes for money and we take pictures of them and we 
sell these magazines and we have the audacity to say that we do a lot more for women. We do. A couple interesting facts about Playboy along the way. It's banned in China, but boy, does it sell well in Hong Kong. It's also banned in India, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan. I mean, here's the, just use your imagination. Can I walk around the street and freely scream whatever the hell I want? If the answer is no, then Playboy's probably banned in the country. In fact, there's even a special Japanese edition that was made not to show genitals, which sounds worse than Diet Coke. There's a special Indonesian version that was launched in 2006, and Islamic extremists really liked it. They didn't. Didn't go so good. Even more interesting, in 2013, Playboy was cleared by the U.S. military because they were in trouble for selling pornography on U.S. military bases. They did not get in hot water for it, but they're not allowed to be sold at base exchanges. Now, Hugh Hefner, the founder of Playboy, died in 2017. And when he died, Playboy was in the throes of its demise that I would say it is in right now. There are, unsurprisingly, some really horrific stories that come out of everything from the founding of Playboy to what happened at the Playboy Mansion. Allegedly, Hugh Hefner would host pig nights where ugly women were invited to the mansion and paraded around for sex. There are also claims that cocaine was so prevalent at the mansion that Hugh Hefner's poodles got addicted because they could just lick it off the ground. A 10 episode series called Secrets of Playboy just premiered and it's, it's rife with all these terrible, horrific allegations of women being drugged and raped. And it's like, you mean to tell me the magazine that had women taking their clothes off for money was terrible to women behind the scenes? Really? You had, to, you had to make a series about that? That seems pretty blatantly obvious to me. Around the early 2000s, right after the rise of the internet, Half kind of started to see the writing on the wall, so he attempted to do some rebranding. He launched a reality show called The Girls Next Door. It was about Half and his three girlfriends. Playboy ceased publication of its magazine itself in 2020. It stopped printing nudity from 2016 to 17, and that went about as well as you can imagine. In the 80s, Playboy launched Playboy TV. It's still around today. They are a top 20 brand in the world, or at least the Playboy Bunny is one of the top 20 most recognized brand in the world. But Nike McDonald's, Coca-Cola, and they're doing some interesting things to try and pivot and survive now, despite not publishing physical magazines anymore. They're doing Playboy NFTs. They're making a decent amount of money doing that. Side note, I think NFTs are a scam, a giant scam. I'm a huge advocate of cryptocurrency. NFTs, I won't go near those with a 10-foot pole. Playboy NFT Ravatars go for an average of $700 each. The highest one went for was $6,000. They're just plugging away now heavily on digital stuff, social media. They're hoping that millennials can turn this around and save it because it has shrunk. The final year that they had the magazine, it was 4% of sales of what it was at their height. And before they pulled the plug on magazines, the brand was losing $7 million a year. Now, they have a lot of money, I'm sure, in their coffers, so they could do that for a while, but unless they rebrand brand, they're not going to last for long. Now, as for the collectability of Playboys, these are collectible. I do okay on these, or at least I was until eBay fucked me over on them. But like a mint condition Marilyn Monroe one from 1953, worth as much as half a million dollars, even one in bad condition can go for thousands. I find ones from the 60s, I generally get about 10, 15 bucks each on them. So about what they would retail for now if they were still being produced. These ones from the 2000, can't show that on YouTube. These ones from the 2000s, these ones go for a couple bucks each. You know, when they come in here, I'll buy them for like a buck each. And I was able to flip them for two, three, four, somewhere in there. But like I said, just because of eBay's policy, I don't want to monkey with it. So I, I'm just going to attempt to blow these out. I'll probably still buy them if they walk in here. I am fascinated by the collectability of these. I do like looking in them, like I said, uh, not just not just for the dirty pictures, but for the the article content itself is very interesting too. I especially like looking at older ones because there's there are some that have hilariously not aged well. Like there's one with Trump that I read that I had that this summer. I got I got like forty bucks on that issue, um, and like I read the whole Trump interview and it was. Pretty interesting. He said, among other things, I could never be president. I don't have time for it. But as far as the longevity of these collectibles goes, I really don't know because Playboy has so much controversy attached to it. This new docu-series seems like it's pretty horrific. Admittedly, I haven't seen anything of it. I haven't watched it because like I said, it just seemed kind of obvious to me that like, yeah, of course terrible things were happening at the Playboy Mansion. It's the Playboy Mansion. I just think the rise and fall of Playboy is very interesting. It is it is a brand that even after, if it does go extinct, if it does defunct and it's gone, the brand itself will live on forever, people. I've seen it tattooed on people. I'm sure you probably have too. Like I said, one of the most recognizable brands in the world. 
that has staying power. And for that reason, there is a collectability market that is associated with it. Not just the magazines, but there's Playboy merchandise, goods, toys, not sex toys. All this stuff is collectible. There are people that only collect Playboy stuff. And that, dear viewer, is the story of the rise and fall of Playboy magazine and its collectability. And if you wanna buy the rest of my Playboy magazines, I would love for somebody to take them off my hands. I have about 50 of them left. Most of them are in mint condition. No sticky pages. I promise I haven't used them. Let me know if you wanna buy some. And just like that, you guys, it is the, um, I'm not wearing a watch today. Let's pretend I am. It's the end of the episode. If you guys like this video, be sure you give it a thumbs up. Hit the notification button so you know when new episodes of Pond Man are coming out. Become a Pond Man Patreon. Every dollar I get goes toward improving this show. Follow me on social media at Pond Man, at Evan Kale. Check out my books on Amazon. You can read the first couple chapters for free. And I will see you guys back here for another episode of Pond Man. Later, guys.